Hello and welcome, my friends, to another stream of Adobe Live and a Happy New Year, of course. Uh, I'm your host, Kieran Lewis, a freelance designer from London. And on today's stream, we have a real treat. Please send some good vibes to a graphic designer and comedian, I might add, Joseph Parsons. <laughs> Joseph, well, how are yeah. you doing, buddy? Give, give me those good vibes. Give those <laughs> good vibes from across the globe. Um, no, it's it's good. It's two two London boys today. I know. They've, they've got us both on the stream. Hopefully, we'll, I'm sure we'll deliver some good stuff, man. Um, yes. Yeah. You have to remember yeah, nice. sort of like global language, like American. We can make it work. We can we'll make it work. I can see the folks coming in there thick and fast on the stream. Uh, hello to Wade, Jack, Jess, uh, and to Tim. As always, send the love in the chat. Let us know where you're tuned in from. Any emojis as well. We'd like to see what's going on. Um, and just as a little heads up, uh, today is Design Tuesdays on Adobe Live, uh, where each stream will be covering different things, different facets within the graphic design spectrum. Um, and today we learn design techniques across Creative Clouds, including Adobe Illustrator. Um, and on the final note, if you haven't already, my friends, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Adobe Live. And also you can do it on Instagram. You can see our latest streams and updates and fun out so much more. So, Joseph, it's all about you today, buddy. Would you like to introduce yourself to our yes. lovely Yes. I'm a hello and thank you. Um, I'm Joe. I've been designing uh, probably about 12 years now, which is a disgusting amount of time. Um, and Veteran. I've had quite an unconventional approach to design. I did a conventional design degree and then zigzagged through startups and um, sort of threw myself in the deep end, learned everything sort of again, uh, became a UI designer. And I thought today would be a good opportunity to not do UI for a bit and actually go back to something <laughs> I really love, like typography. Um, nice. And as you said, I'm a comedian as well, and that's my main hustle nowadays. So um, it's always nice to jump back into design and actually yeah. be creative in a different way, which is lovely. I'm, I'm expecting a few little nuggets of jokes every now and again for the stream. It's going to be quite a nice yeah. sound of design. And... Expectations. <laughs> <laughs> those expectations, just set those just ever so slightly lower. Um, but yeah, that, it, that. hopefully we'll have a laugh anyway. Of course um, you we will. And um, would you like to let us know, obviously, what we'll be working on for today's stream, where we'll be kind of jumping in, which yeah. I'll let you, let you lead. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So we're going to be doing a typography thing. It's a live brief. Um, as of my screen, you should be able to see now. Um, so it's a live brief. Uh, my new show, stand-up show, is called um, Overhaul, um, as you can see here. Um, and I need a backdrop. So the behind sort of part of the stage. So, so it's going to be on tour in the end of the year. Um, and I want to design this typeface myself so it's a bit more unique for me. Um, it's also going to be the typeface on all the posters, all of the design across all of the um, all of the social media and globe, hopefully. Um, so this is quite an important brief, actually, for me, is to, to design the first bit of um, visual for this new show that I'm doing. So it's quite exciting. Nice. Um, yeah. So to give you an idea, um, <laughs> this isn't how I design, by the way. This is the most basic way of mocking something up when you can't be bothered to doodle it. Um, this is sort of how I envisage it. So I'm going to project the, the typeface we designed today onto my actual wall in my flat. Um, I'm going to paint that and film me nice. painting it, which is going to be what people see as they come into the show. Um, nice. And then at the end, I'm going to paint over it. That's basically the sort of concept. And we'll see parts of that on the posters, um, mm. on the promo shots, um, on the tour dates. So that's basically sort of the approach I'm going for. So we're going to sort of look nice. at typography and how sort of different shapes form different letters, essentially. It's very simple, very straightforward. We're going to take you through the sort of taking a, a typeface that exists already um, as a sort of guide so you can sort of see the shapes and sizes and widths of letters. We're then going to create those letters ourselves in Illustrator so we can have complete sort of control over each letter mm -hmm. and make it just a little bit more unique. Then we tidy it up and then we come up with our sort of final product and then we can start playing with it in terms of colour, in terms mm. of um, sort of kerning, um, whether we put it on an angle, we can sort of play with sort of repetition, colour and all that sort of nice. stuff. This is just some stuff I did earlier that was sort of thrown together. So hopefully mm. we'll come up with something nice and impactful. I want it to be quite bold. Um, nice, nice. As it's quite a rock and roll rebellion show. It's a show where right. I'm sort of talking about rebellion and talking about reinventing oneself after an operation I had last year. So mm. it's quite a sort of uplifting, but kind of a rock and roll aesthetic to it. So I want yeah. it to be quite boom. Impactful, um, yeah. And, and thanks yeah. for uh, bringing us in as well. I feel like with us and the audience to kind of get an insight into your world, right? And to see you work on something that's quite passionate to you, which is 
pretty awesome, man. Well, I love doing these. Um, I've thought this is my third one, and I always like to bring a live thing because mm. I think it's more important. And often, if, if if this all works out today and we actually create something kind of cool, <laughs> it'll be really cool because you were here at the sort of birth of, of this course. idea. And obviously, doing a whole typeface in an hour and a half is unlikely, uh, but we're going to do the best sort of version of a typeface we can do. We'll tidy it up mm. and there might be a bit of tidying, but what we want to do is have a lot of fun and just play with type because it's the first thing I fell in love with when I started doing design. It's a thing nice. that really, uh, the thing I loved about typography was that it was sort of quite late on in the world of art and design that it became part of art. Um, mm. And a sort of like movements like Bauhaus really sort of pump that forward. And it's sort of that's when I got really inspired by typography and I wanted to make my own typefaces. Now, it's not going to be typeable. Um, that's something that other people can do. Um, mm. That's not something I can do. Uh, so we're going to use Illustrator to create a sort of one-off bespoke typeface. And if we have time, we'll move on to some other letters. I want to show you some more complicated letters like S's yeah. um, that are a real pain. Yeah, that, sounds like so. a plan, that sounds like a plan and i remember when I, we had our first little uh, sort of communication jason we said about you know it'd be nice to get the uh the audience involved as well in, in interactions or maybe a little poll so i guess in the absolutely. studio if you find a point where you're like oh i'm stuck on color or shapes we can always throw the questions out to our lovely audience and uh I mean, I can already see as well on the chat, everyone's kind of popping off and saying uh, it's going to be a very football related street. I think because the whole London to London thing here going on, um, which is good. But also, if they've seen me before, yeah. the last show was about football and sport. Uh, okay. So, that, I mean, that's very hopeful that anyone's ever seen me ever do anything. Well, that's this um, money because we've got Tim actually mentioned. That's why I wondered maybe the connection. They've seen your, they've seen they, your they chops might, around. They might have seen the last one, which was all about sport and LGBT equality in sport. So this wow. one's more uh, less about the gay stuff and more about um, changing your life in a, in a year. Yeah. Um, Sweet. So Let's, that's uh, it's, it's brilliant. Ready. Should we jump into it? Should we just jump just in? It. Got this quite just sort it. of... Um, quite boring grey uh, text here um, that we're going to sort of use as a guide. So one of the things I like to do before I even start making any typeface is look at what other people have done. Um, mm -hmm. So this is an acumen condensed, I believe, um, and it's a really sort of nice condensed typeface. I like condensed typefaces for this purpose because it's. It, I think it just gives a huge impact. I'm not sure if you guys would have seen things like Killing Eve, some of those sort of titles. Great show. It's with like the dripping um, sort of drop mm. in the V or the, it, it just, it's just really like impactful. So there's a bit of that inspo in this. Nice. So this is a sort of a typeface that I don't love. I don't dislike. I think it does the job perfectly well, but what I'm looking at is the proportions of things. So one of the things I do to start with, and this is a very basic, I do want to just put a disclaimer out there straight away that there are it's always going to be a better way than doing this than I do it. Um, this is how I do things. There may be a quicker mm. way. Um, this is what I'm doing for, uh, I think that's the joy of this this software is that there are probably about 15 different ways of doing something. Um, exactly. This is just how I arrive at doing it. Um, so if you think it's that there are better ways, I've, I'm always all ears. Um, I've got a trackpad today that I've not used before. So I thought that would be a good, I thought it'd be good to start using things that I've not used. So basically what I'm doing here is using this as a size guide. Um, this is going to be essentially what what we're going to use as a, as a sort of size guide. Um, so we can sort of see what letters are similar sizes. So okay. I think the R is pretty similar. So we're not too far off there. Um, this isn't a complete science. It's just to give you an idea. So you can lock that by pressing Apple II. Um, I'm having to learn all the shortcuts again for, um, for Illustrator. It's been a while. Um, and you can see the U sort of is similar in shape and size mm. to the O. And I think the V and the A, maybe the V is a sort of similar size, slightly off. So you can see the V is going to be slightly wider. Mm. And this just gives you an idea of what type what typefaces do, essentially. Um, one of the other things you'll notice with typefaces is that um, the width of things is slightly different to even. But we're going to start with an even width when we start drawing these out. So cool. I'm going to jump in to just start drawing a shape. I'm going to draw the O to start with. It's the, it's the first letter. It's a good thing to start with. So we're going to just give that uh, a nice stroke. symmetrical shape. Nice so. symmetrical, easy <laughs> letter. Wrong. Uh, if I just do the O, guys, this is how you do an O. <laughs> like Zorro. Um, um, just to add very quickly on the chat, we've got some lovely comments whilst you're in the press of dinner, Joe. We've got uh, Jess stuff. who said, uh, "Wow, such a stunning." promo slash opening concept. So we've got a few folks already loving your uh, your trailer for. 
That's amazing. I've also just updated to the new software of um, Adobe. So this is going to be a, a, a magical mystery tour for all of us, I think. So what I'm going to do here is just create a stroke of 30 pixels. I think that's going to be roughly the width I want it to be broadly. Yeah. Um, so this, this this part is not about getting the letters to an exact science. It's about getting rough shapes that look a bit like the letters. Um, so we're going to just curve these edges slightly. i um, going to probably... It's so cold in my flat, right? There we go. Um, so I think it's going to be kind of squared off this typeface to start with. I kind of quite like square shapes rather than circles. I want it to be quite tall and lean. So we've got our guide shape. This is going to be the width that we're aiming for. Um, and we're going to literally just, it's, it's as simple as this, add a bit of a pen, draw out some random shapes that sort of slowly reference the, the character of the typeface i love a v because you get the uh get the point or what we could do actually to make our lives a lot easier there was that a design plunder the whole get the point i just i feel yeah. like there was design go joke I'll, nugget there i, I think the sometimes i i'm i'm so just sort of subconsciously funny but <laughs> nice i gotta say I, i'm quite a sarcastic comic I, I i must say i don't believe in myself that much um so we're just getting the rough shape of the v we'll cut that all up later but that's sort of going to be the v and then we'll get the e done so we're going to do again get our trusty pen tool um this is going to be our friend for this i'm going to do this slightly differently where we have um e so i'm just getting my shapes sort of roughly there and then once i'm happy we'll get some rules in so one of the things you'll notice about this typeface Mm. is that you pop the ruler down here. You can see the O always comes slightly below. Mm. Um, and that's quite common amongst most typefaces is that the O will slightly bleed over the top of the X height and the below as well. Mm. Um, and you can see most of the letters in this particular word stick to that kind of height. Um, but the O is the sort of the outlier with the U. So anything mm. of curvature, I think, just to give that visual it's it's a sort of visual trick so that when you see it smaller as well it's when it looks all aligned mm. that's sort of if, if the curve is on the same line it will look like the u and the o is floating particularly the smaller you go so mm. it's a sort of visual trick um so i'm sort of just adhering to that slightly at the moment so we're going to give myself a huge amount of gap there maybe slightly more uh rough this is all quite rough at the moment so we're just going to rule these little sh shapes out whilst you're uh doing that as well it'd be great yeah, to know in, in the chat well where are you kind of you know where are you folks streaming in from if you're on youtube behance let us know in the chat uh which part of the globe you are watching us streaming today i think we're both in london that's clear because we're both pretty much cold in jumpers i can see us both yeah, wearing it's jumpers, absolutely but, freezing yeah. in this place in this flat and um yeah it's uh it's kind of it's slow so I'm doing this quite slowly. So we've got an E. You'll notice the E as well. Sometimes E's have a slightly smaller crossbar here. Um, and we're just going to do... R's are slightly trickier. So this is our first sort of challenge, I would say, as a letter. Um, you'll see with an R, you've got lots of different widths going on. You've got this width. This width is slightly different here. This mm -hmm. width and this width are probably pretty similar. And that width's slightly different as well. So we've got different shapes going on with the R. For this part, we're literally, as we said, just scamping out so we've got even thickness for most of the parts to start with. Um, and I will then go in and start tidying this up when we go into outlining it all into strokes, um, which is exciting. So we'll do that now. I always think as well with Illustrator, it's 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 quite a fun part, especially if you're quite new to working with typography, where you have so much flexibility and freedom, right, to kind of do what you want exactly. with the lettering. So uh, well, this is really the fun, fun bit. Yeah. I mean, this is where you literally just play around and sort of see what works and what doesn't work. Quite often, mm. you'll um, you'll find certain letters irritate you more than others. Um, my most hated letter is an S. Because it's sort of because a lot mm. often what I tend to use is is shapes essentially to give you mm. an idea of of what the geometry of this of shapes are. So you can see um, an R is built up of sort of essentially like a semicircle mm. and a and a square. Um, as I said, this is not an exact science at the moment. We're just getting the rough shapes. Hopefully, uh, like letter K's as well, Joseph. You're not you're not opposed to a. Uh... 
Let Letter K's K's every now and again. Yeah. Letter K's are slightly... Being biased, clearly. Because <laughs> they're straight and they're um, they're a little bit easier to work with. So you sort of got that R. Again, as I said, we're going to tidy this up in a minute, so it's not a huge issue, but we're just getting cool. the rough shapes going. Um, so then we're going to get the H. I can imagine people watching this going, how is this going to actually look like a typeface? Yeah. I think that's the beauty, right, of why folks kind of tune in as well, especially if they're quite new to, you know, any sort of design programs, they just watch to sort of see how professionally yourself kind of jump into it. And um, like I think you mentioned previously where, you know, everyone has their own different methods and ways of jumping into a project and it's kind of nice to kind of dip in and see how the folks work. Exactly. And I think with anything typeface related and anything illustrator related, it's not a particular sort of, I, I'm whenever I get asked to do these Adobe things, I'm always very excited to do them. But I, I will always claim I'm no expert with this software. It's just how I've learned it. It's just how I've um, how I've sort of adapted to it. And um, and I'm fine with that fact. I've never been too worried about knowing all the right shortcuts and knowing all the right sections because I think that sort of sometimes you just want to be creative and not worry about the process. Mm. Um, there are certain bits of software like XD, for instance, where it is actually quite handy knowing all of the sort of sections, which I've used quite a lot. Um, that's slightly different because XD, you've got um, sort of symbols and stuff that you can use to make websites. So that's slightly different. But when it comes to Illustrator and actually just getting some ideas down, I see it's literally like a notepad and paper. Um, nice. So here we are, we've, we've created a um, created a very rough, very ready sort of version of a typeface we've just got all of the basic shapes i'm just cutting this stuff off so it sort of looks like a bit more like a typeface um just so you can see it in situ um again this is just me going right essentially this is me with a pencil just sketching it out but mm. digitally so we've got the basic shapes they're not perfect they're not sized up yet but i quite like the idea of this being quite you know shipping containers mm -hmm. i love a shipping container because it's like proper, it's what I would call blokey type of like, it's right, really like, yeah, here we are, face. here it is, <laughs> plonk, plonk. Like it's got sort of real, like it's got um, character, <laughs> no nonsense energy. And I really like mm. that. So I want this to have no nonsense energy, like a sort of shipping container. No and, what you'll find, energy. <laughs> and they and they have kind of like angles. So what we could play with is the, this sort of like, this section here of the V, we can sort of play with the angles here. The R has got so much potential to have some form of fun had. So we've got we've got our sort of very basic, very easy to sort of create um, shapes here. It obviously mm. isn't perfect yet. So we've got our outlines. We've got the right thicknesses now. That's the sort of that's that process done. Now we basically take each letter again. Um, I always tend to keep. I like to do it in separate phases just so that I can always go back to it if I need to. I need yeah, to start again and I know what I've done. So here we've got, I've got this little grid up, which I tend to sort of put up because I think I need it. And then what I'll tend to do is then just completely ignore it. Um, and that's fine. <laughs> it's just uh, peace of mind. <laughs> that's just fine. Um, am I going to go this this um, sort of squared off? I don't think I am. Um, one of the things that you'll notice about this is that the counter, this little middle section here, sometimes mm. doesn't follow the the rule of the the sort of uh, center. So like if you just did a perfect stroke, it, it this is sort of perfectly even. But what I want is this sort of outside shape, which has a slightly shorter sort of line here. So this little section here is just slightly shorter to, than that for some reason. Um, so I want that. That's what I want. So I'm going to have it. Um, so what I'm literally going to do is um, take this. I'm going to go up to um, object path outline stroke because um, we're now going to start playing with the sort of the widths of this. Um, and this is when this will start to become a typeface a bit more and we can be a bit more um, sort of cheeky with mm. what we're going to do. What I'm also going to do is just expand the appearance of this as well. So, or I'm just going to get rid of everything. That's that's a new Mac uh, as well. Uh, so nice. got so everything new for this. I got a new Mac, new Illustrator, 
um, a new trackpad, I thought I'm going to really commit to this. I'm going to like have the best. So new time. year, new Joseph. I like new it. year. Um, <laughs> quick question: is, I mean, whilst you're in, whilst you're in the process of it, and you kind of touched on it before about um, you know this idea of having fun with it, playing around with it. I'm quite curious about your sort of design background. Are you self-taught? Or did you go to university? Just for any of our, you know, I went to university. Listening? I know it's hard to believe. Um, I went to university to do this. Uh, I did, and when I went to university, this was back quite early on in my uh in my in the world of design where sort of digital wasn't a thing and mm. everything was done via absolutely mark this up by the way um yeah everything was done sort of uh based on books and all of that stuff so i i went i went in as a print and brand designer um and then essentially what i did was um ignore that and uh went and did my own thing which was essentially I found it more exciting to be um, a, a sort of digital designer, just because I felt that there was more that you could do with it. Um, mm. I felt like it was it was slightly less restrictive than print. Um, print has a lot of rules. I've found. Um, I'm not sure if you agree. I mean, that's, that's yeah, I mean awful. that's my baby. <laughs> but a, a I, I kind of like rules. <laughs> I, I, a lot will find that sacrilege what I've just said there, but um, my ears I, I found it. It was all a bit ruley for me. Um, mm. Is this a new thing with Illustrator where you cannot um, redo that? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to now just edit the actual path um, to make it a little bit closer to this. So what we're going to do is just drag these in slightly. So I was trying to talk and concentrate then. It was quite tricky. No, no, when you're in a good place, I've got, it's I've got a, to get, a skill. I've got to get better at that if I'm going to do these. Um, so I'm literally just, actually, I'm going to do this. So I'm going to take these both up at the same time so we keep this relatively even. Um not okay pop that up to here so i'm just going to try and close this gap so we've got this sort of a little bit i'm going to do this rough and ready for now um so we've got this sort of shape and then what we might do is just do that which i always quite like doing which is just control y just give you an opportunity to just select the bit that you want, essentially. Uh, so I want this this bit. Now, what you can do with this, you could probably make it a bit more serify, so you can have a bit more fun with this. Um, serify is a technical term. Uh, you want it to be a bit <laughs> more that. serify. Um, what you can do is also just duplicate half this shape, duplicate it. But um, I'm being lazy at the moment because I just want to get this sort of done. And we're just going to create that so it sort of aligns to here. That's sort of, I'm doing this by eye. You can do it much more accurately mm. once you've had a bit more fun with it. So you can actually go. Mm, it's looking good. And it looks kind of fun then. And then you can start mm. playing with the angles of it. I'm not going to go that extreme, but I do want there to be slightly less going on here than there is on the width. Mm. So I'm not going to go full serif, but I'm going to just tweak it so it's a little bit sort of slightly further down what i'm tending to do is i am just selecting the points and i'm just pressing shift and down so i can do it in relatively even bits so i, I know i've counted two down so it's going to be an even width you can also um sort of use guides so i'm using that for now i'm not sure if i'm happy with that but it's sort of a little bit more oe than that is um and we may come back to it but that's where we will start so we've got slightly less width going on the edge we've got a bit more width going on the on the on the angle now we're going to get our little v we're going to do the same thing again outline stroke and uh, path outline stroke um we're going to just drag this down to the baseline as we learned last time the o's go slightly below so i'm just going to go slightly below my little baseline here um and again this is where I like the eraser tool. Oh, best yeah, invention eraser. Illustrator has ever done. Is that your you favorite hold, tool, is it? <laughs> it's my favorite tool. You hold Alt. Nice. Um, I'm going to bring that down just slightly below. And then you take off and you've got a V. Isn't that amazing? Um, so the V is just slightly smaller than the O. The O might need to go up in height, but we'll, we'll see where we are once we've done all the letters. Um, so as I sort of said earlier, I sort of teased that we could potentially just drag this down a little bit further. Um, and what would be quite nice is maybe aligning this so it drives down to the O. Mm. So we're sort of taking that similar width. I like things lining up. Even if it doesn't always work, I like to have something that lines up. 
some uh, order yeah i love order i'm a bit of an order boy i like things sort of having some kind of um pattern to it method to um, the madness do i dare say oh or... I, there's no madness here i'm a completely sane individualist <laughs> i think we can all agree that's the, that's the creative um, industry <laughs> yeah it's the creative industry exactly go. it's, it's gonna just um again we're gonna do what we did earlier path outline stroke um just gonna sort of essentially align these up with the pathfinder tool over to the um to the right let's align those and then i'm going to drag this up to the top whilst you're doing that we've just we've just put in the chat what is our folks uh favorite tool in illustrator we've got pj who said the pathfinder panel um it's, yeah i'm a, more of a pen it's tool. a worldy the pathfinder yeah. panel a brilliant thing there's so many good I'm always tools. like I'm always so, curious to see when like different designers or just people in general playing around with programs how they sort of set up their workspace because everyone has it's almost jumping into a car right you have your own things on the dashboard in a certain way that maybe you know if you jump into it it feels weird to you but to the person it's completely natural I'm always curious to see uh, yeah I that's a really good space. point and I would say um again mine changes every week depends mm. what I'm like there will be things I'll, I'll tidy it up and I'll have it sort of where I've got all my tools on the right and I'll go where's that thing and then I'll go yeah, yeah. ah I need that thing and then I'll forget the thing um so one of the things I might do here is I might make these e sections slightly thinner um but I'm going to keep it for now at the same width and we'll see we'll see as you can see we're going to play with the width as well of the type ty typography in a minute um, again, we're just tidying up the letter forms first and then we'll go and make them sort of wider or sort of slightly different. Um, cool. so this is a real fun one to do. I like the R's because they're a challenge, mm. um, but there's a lot of scope with an R because a lot of letters follow particularly sans serif typography. There are rules essentially for making it legible and making it work. Mm. Um, particularly things like E's and V's and A's. They're all quite sort of s straightforward letters. When it comes to an R, you can actually have a bit of personality. And you'll notice one of the things that's so different about a lot of ty typefaces is the first letters I look at, if I'm trying to work out whether the typefaces are the same as the ones you should be using, um, mm. is R, G. It's a G. The lowercase G is always a good one. But an R is a really good indicator because often it like Arial and Helvetica and stuff are very different in the way they do their R's. So it's always a good um, indicator. This is great. I get to be sort of boring about typography uh, to people who I think might actually like it. This is the best thing. I've tried to talk no. to comedians <laughs> about this and they get so bored of me. Um, no, they you're find in the right me... place to geek out. Anything design related, you're definitely in the right place to geek I've, out. This is a I real treat sure. for me. This is a real <laughs> treat. It's um, our gift to you, Joseph. There we go, and your gift to us for being here. I feel I feel very lucky to uh, to, to be uh, to be here and uh, talking you guys through this. Um, and it's been a busy day today, so I'm feeling kind of just about alive, which is good. How's your day nice. been? It's been okay. I mean, like I said, because we're in London, right? Time difference. So for us, we're kind of winding down the evening with a nice stream. But for other folks, potentially, it's like uh, could be having their breakfast and, and watching. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's that's kind of a slow start over. into the year. Yeah, that's the, that's the beauty of why we do what we do, right? With the streams. So are you full time Adobe? So I'm interviewing you now. Um, uh, you <laughs> go for it. That wasn't on the agenda. I'm kidding. No, I, no so I, I I do work with Adobe as a host quite regularly, but I'm a freelance graphic designer. That's that's what you're, I do. You're a freelance I, I make books. too. And yeah, you make yeah. books. I make books. Yeah. That's, so when favorite? you mentioned print, I was like, ah, oh, that's that's my neck of the woods. Uh, yeah, I love, I, I love, I love it. Print. I respect it. As I just said, quite quite a lot. Love a good uh, grid. <laughs> I, I just so. hate this. So, the, the joy of the digital now is it's basically nicking all of the principles of print. <laughs> it's, it's it's like mm. so like websites now are so printy, which I'm kind of all for. Um, yeah, I've got quite a tall R going on here, and I think I want to line it more up with the R. Elongated. Elongate it. Um, ignore that section at the moment because we're going to make this a lot less thick in a second. But I'm going to literally just. Um, I'm going to lock these guides because they're going to. Uh, I'm going to keep moving them, and that's not good for I me. I definitely just saw an, a lowercase r in that curve as well. I mean, it is obviously flipped reversed, but you see, like an r with an r, basic geeking out now. Um, the great, yeah. the great thing about typography <laughs> is if you look at a word long enough, it stops looking like that word. <laughs> and we're going to have that of at some stage, yeah. <laughs> so we're just, um, I'm just sort of nice. I'm going to take my um, time with the r, so I'll find the option key in a second. There we go. Um, I'm just gonna again this is all a little bit just 
I'm going to do my uh, do my job as a host and, and read some of the great qu- uh, quote, some of the great comments, I should say, coming through the chat. So oh, we've got put through. We've got a few. Yeah, we've got a few. We've got um, we've obviously put through what is our favorite tool, and we've got the pen tool by Reverb. Uh, we've got Jack who said way too many options. Totally agree. Um, and we also have Wade who said the type tool. So we've got a lovely comment from Jess who just said, uh, love the progress, always astonishing to watch letters side by side becoming a typeface. So similar to what you said before, Jason. Oh, thank you. That's made my day. That's, all I want is for someone to get to get something from this. Um, so if we can do that, that's great. Um, I'm just uh, bashing a load of keys here um, at random, uh, which has not worked brilliantly for me. Well, it's looking uh, good, though. It's looking... Yeah. The bashing is kind of like strategically led to something quite nice. strategic <laughs> bashing. I'm going to now just... Um, bash these together with the Pathfinder tool, your friend and mine, the Pathfinder tool. I love it. Um, now we're going to um, just get rid of some of these points that we don't need. So I don't need those points there. Um, one of the parts of the R will be making the points as few points as possible and then using the curvature tool to really like refine it. Um, there is a science to these type these typefaces. What I like to do is just slowly work my way around what I want to do. So I'm just going to re- reduce the width of this bit here um, because this is sort of what you see in typefaces. I'm going to move this up as well. I know the curvature is all a bit wonky at the moment, but we're going to sort that out. Um, maybe slightly more like this. Maybe a little bit more shrink. Then you can just get to really geek out. I love this stuff. Yeah, good quite peaceful. It's a bit like knitting. Uh, well, <laughs> I love that. That's the first time I've heard that before. Um, um, whilst you're in the flow of that, it's a good time to just remember it's about half an hour <clears throat> into the stream. So if you have just half joined an hour us, ready, half an hour. I think so. Wow. Quick in the Adobe space. Um, a massive welcome if you have just joined us. We have the very awesome graphic designer Joseph Parsons, and on today we are learning how to create a unique typeface for his backdrop design. Uh, so any questions as per usual, get us in the chat and I will do my best to share them directly with Mr. Joseph. You can start to see what I've just done there is I've just dragged that in to create a slight less, um, a slight less, that's that's English right there, um, to create a slightly smaller sort of width going on here and here. And it starts to then reference, if we bring this in even further, we start to reference the width here and this little elongation of points. And that's just a lot of fun. And I think that's that's sort of it's it's that's if we can just bring that out a little bit more as well. Lovely stuff. And we can bring you up a little bit. Whilst you're doing that, Joe, we've got a great question here um, from Wade, who said, yes. uh, "So, Joe, you mentioned type personality. Uh, what's the personality you're going for in this particular typeface?" I'm going for, I, so at the moment, I'm not sure if it actually works. It's kind of going at the moment for what I'm trying to get. Uh, I want it to be quite punchy and and a bit like someone shouting at you. Um, it's sort of where I'm going with it. Uh, it's quite a rock and roll show, so I want it to be kind of a rock and roll typeface. I think what we're in danger of here is we're making this R slightly too pretty um, with slight thin widths here. Um, mm. So again, this is all subjective. People have different opinions on what works and what doesn't. Um, but for me, I think what I'm aiming for is something just a little bit shouty and a, not aggressive, <laughs> but slightly rebellious. That would have been very rebellious if yeah. I kept that counter. Um, <laughs> so there we go. <laughs> um, so we'll go back to the R because I could spend forever on an R, but you can sort of see we've gone, they've got a bit of a sort of um, a fancy flick out the bottom. They go, what? Um, I don't want that. Uh, I want it to be kind of stripped in terms of how straight it is. Mm. Um, now the H again, we're not going to do too much with the H that sort of works. Um, just get you out of the way. Um, so the H it's, it's, see, it's starting to come together now, isn't it? You're starting to see it become a typeface from where we started and then Mm. we can have even more fun with it in a second where we can actually really start playing with, um, the, maybe the little ink wells here and, uh, Mm. sort of make those a little bit more extreme, maybe. Um, but do you know really, what I'm seeing actually? Just this is really random. <clears throat> I hope I'm not going too off piece here, but I don't know if you've ever seen the film Joker, Whack on Phoenix, but the typeface of the Joker, if anyone has seen it in the stream, please let me know. It's quite similar. Um, well, I don't know. I, def- I definitely see it. And it's a good thing because it's a cool film. Um, can I show yeah, you? See I've not seen it. Yeah. And as we were speaking beforehand, <laughs> uh, films are not my yeah. specialist area. Um, That's all so good. 
but we I, forgive yeah. you for that we forgive you i mean I'm you said the blasphemy I... of never watching marvel but we forgive you it's okay. uh, yeah no it's not not for me it's not bedded in real life and I, 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 i'm good. forever i'm gonna be honest i'm um i'm a realist uh in in the fact uh, yeah. that i need i need to sort of see myself in the characters and an element of realism in film i don't know that makes me quite a boring person with no imagination no, not at all. but i i kind of think it does um so one of the things with this crossbars i'm going to make these slightly smaller than the uh, width of the other side so i'm going to make these 25 pixels um and i'm going to just line that up actually with that bit because we can and it sort of exaggerates this bit which i quite like and we've just used the shape of the v I like reusing shapes that are already in the web in the typeface because it mm. starts to create its own character and become its own thing then. And then you start to get those little moments where a typeface becomes its 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 own thing. Mm. Um again, what you can see I'm doing here is I'm duplicating the O. I'm gonna chop off the top um here and just simply drift that up here. And and within what, just under half an hour. We're starting to create a typeface here that feels like a typeface that has a bit of personality. Not not huge amounts, but we're getting there. Um, and here again, I'm just going to outline that path. Your friend of mine, the Pathfinder tool. Outline. There we go. So pop that here. We've, uh, we've got perhaps the best comment of the day on the chat. We've got, there you go. It's a shouty rock and roll shipping container. <laughs> that's so essentially true. what we're looking for nothing screams comedy <laughs> but, a, ever. but a shout and shipping container style typeface so we can uh, see we've got nice. um a basic of a, a basis of a typeface here now um which is exciting for me um just get rid of the guides i'm just going to get rid of the grid as well so we can start to see this become its own animal its own beast um so what we can do is maybe i'm gonna use this as a first pass so i'm just gonna outline that straight because it's gonna annoy me if i don't make this one solid shape um and now i'm gonna go right cool that's one way of doing it let's do another one hmm. um we'll make the h1 shape as well um da -da -da -da. so maybe we go slightly different with this one and go really extreme and Ooh. take out as much negative space as we can this might not work i don't know why i thought this might why this might work but you it's never know error though, right you have to kind of like never know and, and something like this could create genius or the worst thing you've ever seen that's the joy of design um exactly there we go. it's it's, it's something isn't it do i love it no does it exist? Yeah. You can't deny that that exists um, and that we've done it. Is it something I'll do again? No. Um, no. But, you know, we'll come back to it. Mm. Maybe bring this one up and see that. I don't mind this as an idea. The sort of... It becomes more shipping containery because it's gone a bit stenciling. <laughs> um, which is what we all love. Um that's definitely so, my takeaway from your stream. I think when we when we wrap up today, like the 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 guy with the really shouty typeface and the shipping container yeah. style, it works. I used to, I used to um, live in Rotterdam, so that's where I sort of started out oh. as a designer. Um, I okay. moved to the Netherlands, and there's so many like beautiful like shipping containers there, mm. and it does make you go like it does make it's that sort of stuff around a city sort of inspires you sometimes you sort of just see something or a logo that's or a, a shot that you go i really love how mm. they've done that and those little moments and i find shipping containers are one of those things that the first things that i really noticed as a designer was like oh the typography is quite mm. daring with a shipping container and you think something I is quite that. dull actually yeah. is typographically quite entertaining um that's so, led quite nicely actually to a question in the chat for any, but based on what you said about the inspiration, if anyone in the chat, let us know where do you kind of get your inspiration from? Like Joe said, obviously, you know, living in different areas, sometimes you see it just from your local area. Well, you know, let us know if it online, is it Bahans, is it these streams, or is it just walking the supermarket? Uh, let us know in the chat, we'd love to hear. Yeah, absolutely. Always good. I'm, I'm just playing with shapes now, as you can sort of see, I'm sort of trying to make something slightly more arty. Um, this, looks a bit cool, like the this looks like a pen lid, doesn't it? Like a nib. Yeah. This would be a great um, writing, writer's logo. Yeah. Um, I'm liking the U as well. It's looking cool. 
The U looks quite cool, isn't it? So yeah, this is me being a bit more playful with it. I don't know if this particularly works. I, wonder, I think the O would lose something, but we'll try it because we're here. We're alive. This is what we're here mm -hmm. to do, to try things. I remember as well, I'll just putting out that we can always do a little poll in the chat if you're stuck between which ones you think is cool. I'm sure our audience wouldn't mind helping out. So just for yeah, out absolutely. There, whenever you're ready. Jump on in. If you hate anything that you see, tell me and I'll change it. That's accommodating right there. No, all, pos all positive energy, but yeah, you never know. All positive energy. You know. Yeah, sorry, I do like <laughs> to bring it down sometimes. Um, but when you do something like this, you're like, cool, we've got certain amounts happening, but the H and the E stand out like a sore thumb now. So mm. how do we make those do this? Um, do we change the angle of the E? So it brings it a little bit more in. Does this become thinner? Um, that's gone up by five. One, two, three, four, five. Sort of, it's it's becoming its own personality, isn't it? Mm. Um, do I love it? Not sure, but that's the joy of it. Um, I like curvature, but I like something a bit more sort of bosh like this, if I'm honest. And that's that's a technical term when something's just bosh. Do you know what I mean? I do. I do love your technical term, Joseph. They, they've come out a few times. We had Bosch. We had someone put down a plonk plonk. I think you had that plonk. at the earlier. But just getting for the sound effects of what yeah, feels good for us, you know. <laughs> no, no, it's good. I mean, everyone plonk, has plonk. their own kind of like what works plonk, for them. Uh, Bosch, um, boing. <laughs> Sometimes if something feels like <laughs> sort of fluffy, um, let's just start playing with some curvature. Then it's we're going away from the idea of shipping containers now. Um, I can see yeah. folks who just put down Bosch question mark. And I feel like as then some of our li London lingo may come is out. Is that london too... I feel like it is a bit london -y, So we should tailor it right back. It's almost like Cockney. For anyone who's outside of the spectrum of London doesn't know that term. It's kind of a bit of a technical term. But it's, uh... yeah, watch some Cockney movies and then you'll be fully educated on Joseph's lingo. Like yeah. Bosch and Plonk Plonk. I've always been called a Cockney. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually from the West Country. I'm from the, uh, the, the west, southwest of England. Um, yeah. yeah, not interesting, but factual. That's right. Uh, good, to know. Go. <laughs> good to know. <laughs> that is interesting. The curve, the curve, and uh... then the uh, sort of like you know how stencils sometimes come out. You have got the curve, and then you've got the square bits. Mm. I'm just having a little look at how that could work. Um, it's kind of softening the edges. It softens so, yeah. it a bit. It makes it a bit mm. um, the Simpsons, doesn't it? But. Um, <laughs> Do you know what's crazy, then? When you when you softened the R, when you did the, I think you did a curve on the left, and then you kept the other one right. Uh, sorry, straight on on the right. It's like that's never usually a rule. I guess you usually have one or the other, but I kind of like that it kind of looked opposite. Like you had yeah. one side had curve, and then the other didn't, which is I don't know. It perhaps goes against all rules of. There's something overall, very. But... <laughs> there's something very camp about this R, and I'm here for it. It's like it's doing a little tiptoe, isn't it? It's like higher. I'm here for it. That's what I like. Elegant. I think I've found a thing I like. I think I know what I'm going to do for this one. I'm going to do this. I think we all know where I'm going with this. Sort of having one of the bits um, curved. Do we not think? Or I could just like, you know, just move it out of the way completely. We've definitely started a trend so, now on this on this Bosch now in the chat. Sorry, going off piece. <laughs> We've I see loads of Bosch, 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 Bosch on the channel, but yeah. You know Sorry, going back to I mean, a lot of people I think will relate to this. You know, when you um, are designing in your studios or in mm. the offices, and um, the sort of creative director comes over and then starts watching you do oh, yeah. the design nice. work. You all of a sudden forget how to do design. Like everything you've just like, it's like you've never used. What is my name? Before. I forgot my yeah, name. It's, I just, it's, yeah. I'm really feeling that now, where I feel like I've never used the software before. No, you're good. Um, for it. You're good but for uh, it. sort of, it's it's you know, it's it's that feeling. Don't know. We'll sort this out. Um, we've even got we've even got a few uh, design jokes. We've got Wade. He just said that typeface is, and I quote, capitals on point. So we hey! There. Yeah, there we go. I'm, I'm really puns. hoping they meant that. They're not waiting on us, my friends. They're not waiting on us, these design nice. puns. Keep please, them coming. Please, it's all, it keeps us afloat. Quite like this, just having a moment where there's something kind of interesting about this. I you think. mean, like partly curved and then partly... Yeah. The, yeah, just I like it. Sort of like choosing, not curving all of it, but just like mm. a moment of curvature. Um... Let's just see if this works. Yeah, because yeah. the A was tricky. It's like which part needs to be 
Yeah, you're gonna find a point where it's like, yeah, it'd probably be something like that, wouldn't it? Or does it need it? Maybe what the inside. Maybe? Doing? I mean, I guess you've already done that at the top with the yeah. Let's uh, let's start off. Let's mimic the V. Kind of ish. Actually, it's interesting because I guess the V is actually reverted, isn't it? A flipped version of the A, barring the line in the middle. Exactly. So it's like, yeah. I mean, this is something, isn't it? I quite I love curving edges because mm. it creates this kind of. I mean, it's not really right for the tone of the show, but it's fun. <laughs> no, and I'm here for <laughs> things that are fun. Um, you never know. You never know. <laughs> maybe just bring this curve all the way down here, and then. Make it a little bit more. Right, maybe we, maybe we even, oh, maybe we even do this. This is the best thing that um, Illustrator brought in. Those little circles where you can smooth oh, yeah. out things into round corners without having to play around with paths. Love that. Okay, well that's um, something, isn't it? Um, <laughs> that's very much my catchphrase. Well, that's <laughs> something, isn't it? I think we can all agree that's design. Um, and anybody who says otherwise um, can go away. Um, cool. Let's try and make this maybe a little bit more straightforward. Let's just tweak this a little bit. So just whilst whilst you're doing that, I think you just mentioned as well about those kind of circular um, uh, techniques on the tool, which makes life easier. And I almost think that if you are just starting out in you know the creative industry and you're curious about these programs, it's probably the best time to be jumping into it because there's so much material out there so many tips and tricks and updates that just makes life easier so again i always say if you are new to these adobe live streams you haven't necessarily have to be a fully fledged graphic designer for many many years you could just literally be doing it as a side hustle side hobby but you know you can I mean, i've never done i've all. never done graphic design before and look where i am uh <laughs> exactly <laughs> exactly that that's it um let's actually put that in the center shall we um uh, let's probably get the right selection tool first. There we go. So I'm just going to make this slightly thicker, essentially, but I'm going to do this by eye. So I'm not going to do this perfect, but it's just to get an idea of whether it would work or not. Um, so I'm going to move that over by 10, move that over by 10, move that up by 10-ish. Um, I love the angle being slightly different here. I like there being a little bit of a different width from here to here. It draws your eye down into the V, which I really like. Mm. Um, so that's something you like. When you notice little things that you like about typeface, you go, right, I want that that sort of vibe, but across the rest of the typeface, you can go, right, I've got this as an option now to go, mm. this is the kind of thing I'm looking for. Um, and then you can maybe just... I mean, that's, that's nuts. Um, maybe we go... <laughs> Nuts is a technical term. There we go. That's slightly more wide. And then we're going to go here. And we're getting that kind of. I can imagine as well, like with some of these um, typefaces you've created, even like, I know it's going off piece slightly, but even screen printing, I don't know if you've ever done much screen printing before, but that could be quite a cool technique based, based on the fonts that you've created. Absolutely. I, I love screen printing. I love all that stuff. It, it was all so like romantic and lovely. I just found it very hard having a career in it. Like, just like I found yeah. it really tough to find jobs in it because there's so many talented people in it. And I'm mm. just, I just, I'm, I'll be honest, I wasn't one of them. I wasn't someone who could really like throw themselves into that technique mm. and, um, and, and do it justice. I think it's a real skill that I didn't quite have. It is. I mean, I, I always say as well, like if you are, if you able and, you know, not necessarily it's important to, but if you do go to university, that's perhaps the best time to experiment with these things because the tools are there and you get a chance to meet new people. And, Again, even just from a personal experience, you know, when I was at uni, definitely screen printing was was fun and 3D printing and all these different elements as well. So, um, I mean, let us know in the chat if what kind of tools you tend to use, if you are, you know, doing sort of branding or do you work with typography or do you use screen printing? We'd love to kind of know what your design background is. I completely agree with that. And I think, yeah, university isn't everything. And it's if, particularly if you're listening in from the UK, you'll be like, hmm, do I have two million pounds to spend on a university degree nowadays? Um Fair enough, it's, it does cost people out. But mm. um, a lot of the joy is we've got YouTube now. <laughs> I know that sounds yeah. nuts. If you're like really interested in design, a lot of the techniques of it you can learn from like- And online. Adobe Live, of course. Got to plug and that Adobe, straight away. And of Adobe course, Live. what kind of terrible host would I be able to just drop that in there? Uh, uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, I was I was, I was, was teeing that up for you. I was hoping you- yeah. not... <laughs> It was an open goal and then boom. And you, a football I'm going to be honest, you, you didn't let me down. 
Um, I, I, I feel like Bosch. I feel like Bosch. Yeah, <laughs> Bosch. I feel that, that there are option, opportunities to learn design without having to spend thousands on a university degree, but um, they do help, um, mm. particularly just with the theory side of things. I get books that are, are particularly typography books because I think all mm. design lives and dies by how good the typography is. You can tell how good the designer is by how well they've laid out typography. I think that's like the first and loads of people can get nice like pictures and mm. style stuff up. But if they typeset something wrong, it's so obvious that they're slightly, they, they've just not hit the mark. Um, it's interesting think, on that though. I've, uh, sorry, I interrupt you. Go there you it. go. I've, that's pretty much what I was going to end. I was going to fizzle out there, to be honest. No, no, because it's interesting when you said that, because I've seen some, and I don't know, let us know in the chat if what, what your thoughts on this, but you might be in a shop, so you see magazines or posters, and depending on the style of what they're trying to achieve, or even the audience are trying to, you know, generation they're trying to attract, it's like this idea of the rule of like keeping certain things in a certain way, it's kind of off the grid. So you can kind of have things, you know, the legend being completely off piece and way off. And actually that's kind of the style they're going for. It's it's almost like the rules that we were taught, I don't know, from, from us, maybe same generation, but in university it's completely flipped on its head, you know, into this realm. Um, People are so happy leaving yeah. widows now, aren't they? That was a thing that I'm not sure. <laughs> oh, if you that hurts me, that though. Oh, yeah, of course, I, oh, oh, widows. You yeah. Never leave a widow. Oh no, and um, that's like one word by itself on the next line of a. In, I'm glad you mentioned that for in context. For <laughs> anyone just jumped in, not, not, not just like the, the yeah. not the death version of it. Um, the, widows on a typeface. There yeah, typeface widow. Um, no, that was a thing that was always a big thing in school. Uh, in uni, it was like, oh, you yeah. can't leave a widow. Oh, he's left a widow there. Oh, he must be so humiliated. Um, cool. <laughs> Liking it wider, um, we've got more of a width difference going on with the sort of crossbars and stuff. Mm. Um, thoughts, feelings, vibes. Can you do mad a little bit more so we can see, we can see everything in its in its glory. Yeah. So we've got to... <laughs> obviously we've gone way off piece here, and we've created something that I would say That's is a good thing. not suitable. But this is the joy of creativity. You have to try this stuff. <laughs> Um, exactly. This feels more in the right ballpark, these middle ones here. Mm. Um, and I think the wider one actually gives you, it's slightly wider, so it's not as condensed as it was because we've just started to extrude it. Obviously, it looks slightly funky at the moment when it's zoomed out because you can sort of see the, when you zoom out on a typeface, you can see where all the problems are. It's a great mm. thing. So you can actually start to see, I know this is really small for you, actually, I'll try and zoom this in. <laughs> I was going to post this stamp, it was difficult. I, I just <laughs> making go. sure I glance at the screen every so often. So you can see the counter doesn't work here, The that doesn't work here either, it's slightly too far down. Um, mm. And you can start seeing those little imperfections that make it do not scan as a typeface. And then that, that's when you go, okay, I sort of know what I need to do there, so I need to make this smaller, blah, blah, blah. And you can start tweaking it and tweaking it and tweaking it. Um, until you get something that's a bit more sort of like this, where I've actually scanned Ooh. and tweaked nice. it. So this is something that I think is a bit more like um, structured. I've kept mm. that sort of low V thing with this stuff. Um, I think I'm going to just take a break from that and talk about S's for a bit, and then we're going to come sure. back to this and start tidying it up. Because um, obviously we're... we're you can tweak this and tweak this and tweak this and start refining it. But the first, the, the, the process I really wanted to explain was that you can start looking at the widths of letters, which we'll do next after this. We'll start looking at the widths of letters. You can start looking at how shapes build, sit, like, um, build letters. And then you can start playing with the shapes of letters to make something really unique to yourself. And I think that's really exciting. And you can have your own brief where you want it to be um, light and fluffy or uh, something that's a little bit more like twee and something that's a bit more sophisticated, like a serif typeface or something. So mm. that's sort of what I wanted to sort of explore there. We'll just jump onto this little canvas here. Now, we're going to get a little ellipsis, which you can also just press L on your uh, keyboard. Um, we're going to get go back to our favorite outlines. Um, now, an S is quite an interesting shape. Uh, I'm going to just use a typeface I've made earlier, um, which is... PJ uh, definitely what? agrees because they've said S is cool. So there we go. It's cool. It's the one thing we all draw at school, isn't it? I'm not sure if you ever did that. <laughs> the Superman S. The, 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 <laughs> I knew the, exactly yeah. what you meant, yeah. <laughs> exactly what you mean. Um, uh, so here we go. We've got this... Um, We've got a, a letter. This is one um, from a typeface I made on a website, which is really useful um, if you want to build your own typefaces. Uh, 
uh, called Universe. Let's give him a credit. Universal Sands. Um, I'll try and bring up the website onto the screen. Um, just so as literally... a little heads up, Joseph, just to say we're approaching the hour mark as well, just as a Amazing. time frame. So you're in a good place. Cool. We're doing great. Cool. So this is a good website. I mean, it's a, a, nothing to do with Adobe, so I'm not sure if I'm allowed to do this. But basically, um, you can change the width of a typeface and it's properly typeable and you can buy it. And that's really useful. So you can nice. properly edit. It's a good what little was website. What's that called? Uh, Universal Sands. So it's a. a, a cool. We we'll, should credit sure, put it in the chat. Yeah. We can put it in the, in the but, chat. But yeah, it's sure. just a really handy. To, like, if you want to build a typeface that's perfectly typable in a matter of minutes, which I've done, so that I've got it for my websites and stuff, because I wanted something. It's it's very much only for that kind of very Swiss design sort of style, mm. which it really suits what I like. Um, but for others, if they want something a bit more funky, that's probably not your vibe. But um, a handy tool. So I've got using that S as a sort of guide. Um, I'm actually going to actually keep that down to a one pixel because what we're going to do is show you how um, shapes make typefaces. Actually, what we're going to do, um, I'm going to uh, make an A apparently. Um, just make that an outline. And we're going to so just dial that up a bit in size. And then going to make your uh, much lighter. I'm going to send you to the back and I'm going to lock you. So this is a, a guide because S's are a pain. They are a pain. They're a pain to do because there's about three, there's two, two to three different shapes there. But what you'll notice is there is a discrepancy between the sort of shapes. So often when you look at an S, you'd think mm -hmm. they're two circles on top of each other, essentially, and you join them. That's not really how they're made. They're more oblongy, um, uh, oblongy um, overly than they are um, sort of circular. So what I'm trying to do here is just align very roughly the middle of this stroke to the middle of this text. And we're not going to use all of that circle, but you'll notice this, if we get um, the guides up, you'll notice that that doesn't quite go to the end here. Um, I'll just... Uh... Um, sorry, that doesn't quite go to the end here, you'll notice. And if I do that over here, um, these are quite light guides, so I don't know how well actually they're going on your screen, but you can sort of see here, see. the S is wider at the bottom than it is at the top. Mm. That's what I'm trying to sort of show you there. So with this, we'll have an oblong, sort of a circle, sorry, an oval there. And then we're going to do this again to try and create this kind of the basis of this shape so we've kind of got it dead in the middle here and then we're going to get a pen tool and this is where it becomes a bit guessworky but we're going to create a diagonal line that is the same width of the y of the of this section so we're sort of ignoring the two shapes here and we've got this this is sort of roughly give or take a few angles, that line there. And that's the line we're sort of trying to get. Mm. We're then going to take these two shapes. What I'm going to do just to make this a bit easier, um, I'm going to give them all different colors because uh, it makes our lives a lot easier. So this is going to be the red bit. This is going to be... I can't believe we've only got half an hour left already. This has flown by. Absolutely flown by. It always does. And also, don't forget as well, we'll leave a nice, nice extra five, ten minutes, maybe six minutes, so at the end, so our folks can learn all about you and, you know, how about to find you on social. How to find me on social? Oh, you poor things. Um, the, the stuff I'm posting at the moment keeps losing me followers, so you're welcome to join. Uh, so <laughs> That's what we've got, we've got at the moment is this sort of line where we're trying to find a good moment where we can then start to use the cutting tool. So I'm just pressing C. I'm going to, as soon as this stop, starts to go off piece, so you can see around about here, um, this area here is where we start losing the shape of the S. And that's sort of where we're going to cut, if I can find my cursor. Uh, there. You need very good eyes to see that, um, of which I don't. And um, we're going to just cut there, and then we're just going to get rid of this little bit of the circle. So that's your first major bit of surgery. Uh, now we're going to do the same thing here. It starts to go skew with around here, I think. So again, again, get get your, your 
your little scissor tool, which is another brilliant under underrated tool of, <laughs> so of, underrated. The, <laughs> of the illustrator components. I don't think people realize just how good that is. So you can sort of see where we need to now get these angles to match up. We've mm. got this angle here, which I think will follow down. So I'm going to just move that to around about here. Again, it's fine to be rough and ready here. And then we're going to basically join these angles. He says, hopefully, there we go. doesn't matter that they're a bit wonky at the moment. Um, and then we're going to get rid maybe of this angle here. And we're going to get rid of this one here. And then we're going to start using this to just drag it down to create that shape there. And it won't be exact science. I mean, you can be a bit more accurate than I'm being currently, but you can mm. sort of just about kink that out. And then you can add some widths to it, uh, which will add my favorite 30 or 40. And you can start to see we've got a rough sort of S shape. And then we can then just start playing around with where this lands. And that is how you sort of create an S from scratch, mm. really. Um, now, you can then start to get rid of the guide layer you've got here in the back, um, which we've got here. And then you can start seeing it in its own system. Mm. And it looks like an S. It works. Um, and then you can maybe, at this point, you've got your width, you've got your rough shape, outline the stroke. And one of the things I would employ you to do is just get rid of any of these that you don't need. So try and get as few of these little points as possible because you'll make a much smoother shape. Um, and it's much easier to manage. So then you can just start to be a bit more fluid with it. And this is- Did you say, just out of curiosity, did you say Joseph, you're using a, a, um, a tablet at the moment as your uh, setup? No, no, I'm using or... a little trackpad here. Okay, cool. But it's not as responsive as my laptop trackpad, and that's uh, why it's been so slow. <laughs> because I'm like, yeah, and I'm always curious to know, like, designers kind of uh, set up and like, what's their kind of if they like a if are you like a two monitor kind of guy or oh, I've they... got two monitors. So you're on okay. this monitor at the moment. Um, cool. You guys are coming through an iPhone. I've got a ring light up, um, nice. which is huge. This is just through making sketches myself. Um, at home <laughs> nice. so i've got all of the lighting and software i need now um nice. sort of um, good to go so, yeah i'm good to go exactly um so yeah you can just pick and choose which angles to get off you can then start tweaking it and then you can make a proper tidy s shape so that's how you do s's um and an s has come over here as well which is good so that's an s roughly you can play with that you can make that mm. um a sort of serif S if you wish. Um, so you could just move these angles up and it starts to become real fun. And you can go mm. for upper fancy. And an S is actually quite a nice shape to work with once you get into it. Um, and again, when you start playing with this, you'll notice angles you don't actually need because they're just causing a headache. You're My right mind of the um the old smooth tool as well. I do love using the, the smooth tool. If you mm. every now and again use that, which is always quite cool. Big time the smooth tool. Big up the smooth tool. So there we go. You can have fun with it. Um, but we haven't got much time, so I'm gonna jump back onto the, the job at oh, hand. Sure. Um so there's an S. I never want to see this again because I've realized that looks so <laughs> ugly now. Sorry for anyone whose name begins with S, but we're, we're in a good place. Yeah, I've just destroyed your letter. But that's the basic, just that's a basic how to on to making an S. Um, yeah. So I'm going to continue with this thicker version because um, I think it's kind of giving me a bit of life, as the young people say nowadays. It says a man in his mid thirties, right there. Down, yeah. <laughs> down the kids. <laughs> yeah, I do, I do. I do. Do you remember when you were like in university and it was all like it's really exciting and it's like you, you get, <laughs> and then you start sort of being in the industry for a decade and you start to lose that a little bit. So when you have these little projects that you set yourself, mm. you can reconnect with design again if you're just doing the same briefs to the oh, same so sort of clientele having your own yeah. things to work on is so 
it's it really does so mm. th this is a godsend for me having stuff like this because i never use really illustrator very often i learned how to use it when i was younger as you can tell mm. uh sort of on cue I, I learned how to use it when i sort of was at uni and i've always used it as a tool um and it's just developed and developed into such a good bit of software mm. that i um i love it but at the same time I don't have to use it in my career at the moment, but it's lovely when I get an opportunity to start making something bespoke. Um, I, I like think you, um, I was going to say, I think you, you, you mentioned quite a nice point as well about the kind of side hustles or doing stuff, especially if you feel like maybe for anyone actually watching, if perhaps they're in a job where they're not necessarily that happy in that space or whether, you know, they're nothing creative at all in what they do. Maybe and they're just curious about how you get into it. It's the idea of just keeping yourself creatively afloat, you know, practice, have a little play around, um, and to be fair, you know, never know, you might be able to make it into a career the more you do um, some design work, right? Which is the absolutely. Benefit of it as well. And I just think also, and the thing I get a lot, I get a huge kick out of this is that this could be a logo. If you have a business or you have an idea of a side hustle and you don't want to just use a typeface that you've seen or found and you want to make something that's actually really bespoke, mm. anyone can do this. It's basically reading a typeface. And going, what are the sort of specifics of that typeface that mm. makes this unique? Um, and we're going to go into that now because um, we're going to look good. at the widths of this this typeface. So, um, um, got to stop using R to paint a rectangle. There we go. M. <laughs> um, M. What does that stand for? M. The M. That's the. Ooh, I Why am I going to say move tool? But I don't know. It's, it's it's it creates a rectangle. No, it's not, is it? Sorry, to create. Yeah. Create a um. Create a, a point that we didn't know. Sorry. If we're, in, if we're in InDesign's more my uh, neck of the woods, but I have got a soft spot for Illustrator too. Oh, I like <coughs> InDesign. So, I did an InDesign one last time. I did this, which was all about li yeah. layout and typography. We're not far off, you know, with the spacing of the V to the O here. The E is always going to be a lot smaller. The R is supposed mm. to be roughly the same width as the O. So that needs to come down a bit in width. Um, the H also needs to come down a bit in width. H if we're using the O as a thing, A and V were sort of similar. We've got mm. the U is the right width. So we're not far off in terms of the widths of things. Now you can start to look at the E as its own width. And then you can line that up with the L because that's going to be a similar sort of width and it needs to be a similar width so we've yeah, got one man who just delivered that's totally what m is a square isn't it it's the it creates a square shape i think um that's what one man said on the yeah it, it, it does create it i just didn't know what m standed for in that regard yeah. that was my no, i generally was, forgot i that, that was question. my main question <laughs> As I was, yeah, I'm definitely on those pieces like, oh, it's, it's, it's more me being a thick it's marky. <laughs> okay <laughs> no that's 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 not on me. So I'm just going to reduce the width a little bit on these because I think they're a little bit extreme. It reminds me of um, at the very early part of the stream when I'm answering what was people's favorite tool. I think I saw someone put down it's the X button in the top right hand corner. <laughs> but that's probably because that's you get so right. frustrated. But it's it means you want to yeah. refresh and come back. Or it means you've just finished the day at work and you're yeah. like, I'm exactly so, there we go. I am nice. so ready for this to be over. Um, yeah. <laughs> which we all have those moments. Um, See, this is starting to really become quite tidy now. And then what I will do, I know I'm sort of riffing this a little bit, but I think this is starting to become a bit of me, this typeface now. It's becoming a bit... Bang, do you know what I mean? A bit bosh or not, not, not so <laughs> bit bosh? bang either. now. We're, we've gone okay. bang. We just have a bit of a bang moment. Uh, we'll go back to Bosch in a minute. Um, For anyone who has just tuned in, you're like, why are they saying random words? Oh, let, we have to rewatch the stream to know why we're saying these words. And there yeah, we go. you have to rewatch the stream um, <laughs> and note that um, I'm fine. Don't worry about me. <laughs> uh, right, there we go. Uh, um, Wade has perfectly actually put the explanation. Yes. So just be very, very clear, my friends, especially if you're new, we don't want to give you the wrong information. M makes a rectangle. There makes a rectangle. Yeah, maybe that's the M. That's <laughs> the M. That's the only bit I, I understand that's what why. it does. In terms no, of I did. I think that's why I think a few of us forgot. And um, yeah, <laughs> there we go. The M makes a re rectangle. That's a way to remember it at least. There we go. It's starting to, it's starting to come together, guys and gals, um, and those who identify as neither. Right. 
it's not perfect, but we can start playing around with it in bigger contexts now. Um, well, we can start playing with it. You can already see I haven't. That new bars are different. That's fun. This this is fun. I'm liking it. Yeah, that's new. Like that. Yes. That's handy. Um, so there we go. I think this would benefit from being uh, just laughing at my. No, no. What I'm like, just to be a clarifier, I'm the terrible host. I, I, I think the the M got taken out of context, and uh, yeah, it was actually a joke. Um, the M makes a rectangle. So let's get off. Let's get off that topic because we were just definitely going off piece. Of I like from... the M makes yeah. uh, makes uh, <laughs> it makes because that is something that I will now remember because I will now because I always because I just think that keys say like I think rectangle. I think R. That's what I think. I'm a man mm. of the world. I like R's. I'm a man uh, of the world. Yeah. I'm a man of the world. I like R's. So I just think R as soon as I think of it. Um, but to be fair, just on that topic as well, like shortcuts, like I always find that folks, shortcuts are there to make our life easy, right? But then you have to kind of, the more you use it, the more you get familiar with it. So if you are kind absolutely. of new to programs, don't freak out because it's something a bit of try and error. And you'll, there'll be some that are so handy that you just will not forget ever again. You're like, oh, Definitely. that's so useful. I, uh, like, like the M tool. <laughs> there we go. Handy one. So, so what I'm are we just... doing now? We talk us through what we're looking at now. Yeah, so I'm just playing with letter spacing um, and then trying to give it a bit more context by adding some colour to it. Um, this actually starts to help give you that feel of um, where it could be in situ. It starts to become a design piece and not just something that's on design software. Uh, I think when you start adding color and something to it, you, you get a bit more of an impact. So for instance, what I've just done there, I've just added a sort of bright color because I love a bright color. Um, I cut my teeth in design in the Netherlands, so I'm all over a big, bright statement color. Um, Group. What a line! <laughs> you got you, if you go to the Netherlands, they're like mm. the 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 design approach for me. Where well, the places that I worked was very much um, is it bright enough? And then you go, I think so. They go, no, you need to make it brighter. And it's, it's and a nice that's color, what I love about color combination you've got there. Actually, it's, it's quite nice. And it's Very it's cool. kind of cool. I know the R isn't perfect, but we're and the A is sort of the counter slightly too small. But it's something more. It's slightly different to a. Swiss typeface. It's got a bit more character. It's got a bit more impact, but it's like it's 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 almost there. And that's what I feel when I start playing with this. You'd like see it in a different context. You're like, oh yeah, I could see that on a on a t-shirt or something. Mm. Um, pink and yellow may be a bit too. Well, I was going to make a very British statement then, Mister Blobby. That's just for us. <laughs> it's literally just for us. Brits. I can see as well, the lovely Wade has just put in the chat a, a lovely uh, breakdown of keyboard shortcuts for you lovely folks. So if you are quite curious about these different shortcuts, keys to make your life super quick and easy, I'd highly recommend having a look at those and find the ones that work best for you. Cool. Cheers, Wade. That's brilliant. I love people like them. I often like, like I, I find that so useful when people genuinely take the effort to help you <laughs> shortcuts and stuff. Of course. It's, it's the beauty really... of our moderators. They <laughs> keep us afloat. Exactly. Thank you so much, everyone, um, for that. Um, so yeah, just again, you can start playing with it in situ. Ooh. That could be fun. Just to give a bit of background. So we're kind of approaching the final ten minutes or so, just as a little ten minutes. Head up cool i kind of this is very design geeky but the idea that paths extrude to create yeah. new shapes i quite like i like design gig you're good for it <laughs> yeah this is a good this is a good design gig for me um <laughs> it's kind of fun isn't it it's got a weird point going on it sort of starts to make that look like a y though or your hall um uh, mm. and the, this is the, joy of the, the, the how is how far it's been elongated, isn't it? To then change yes. because less ability always needs to be the key, right? So yeah. Well, one of the things I like doing always, and I've got to stop myself from doing it now, is just elongating the ascenders or descenders of type because I just love. Well, I'm going to do it now because <laughs> I'm rebellious. Do it. Have a bit of fun with it. <laughs> but I love nothing more than doing uh, this. Boing. 
Do you know what I mean? I just think it like a, it, like a race. Who's going to win? It's <laughs> been there for a while. <laughs> I just think it looks really cool. I don't know why. I've always loved it when you see like things go up and align yeah. to the same point. Wayne just know. made a comment. It's getting more and more rock and roll now and shouty though. Yeah, it is getting shoutier, isn't it? Like I mean, maybe punk rock, isn't it? But punk rock is the yellow, so that's kind of fun, yeah. isn't it? And you can start playing with it. This is the stuff you can do when you make your own typeface because it's nobody else's. It's just, um, your own. just it's your own thing. Um, You're having a bit of fun now. I can see. Just it's like, what else can I elongate? Just like, it, it, looked, it lacked a bit of balance because it was a bit back heavy. If I did that, it was a bit back heavy. Yeah. So I've I've just um I've just made it a bit more fun. Um, yeah, Carol agrees. Carol's like, do it. Dot, 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 because you can. There exactly. we go with the sunglasses emoji. She knows what's up. I'm absolutely loving that approach. I think that's that should be how we all design. It's been um, a t shirt, I think. I'd buy it, definitely. I, I mean, would, I wouldn't buy this typeface yet, but we're, we're no, far. The, the comment from Carol. <laughs> but yeah, eventually, I'm sure we would. Yeah. Eventually, I'd buy this on a t shirt after maybe a couple more hours of playing with it. <laughs> um, but uh, in, in the space of an hour and a half, I've, I've given. A whole word ago, um, and we good man. Yeah, love mint green. Nice actually, that's a that's a that's a color, isn't it? Oh, mint green, mint green, primary blue, and or purple. It's we weren't joking about about your your um, your mm -hmm. love for bright bold big colors, color. The let's go, let's dark go. Palette there. Yeah, yeah I also it. think yellow goes really well with this color, but you need a darker yellow. Um, maybe completely different shade of green, but yeah, I like all that. I like color. Nice. I'm gonna just make that uh, blue. Um, hopefully this is inspiring. I mean, the I mean, the chat has been popping off, so it's been all about positive has energy it? for sure. Is it, it has been good? Yeah. Have you you've not given me any of the negativity ones yet? I want I want <laughs> give, me, give me some <laughs> straight negativity. Said, let's do you let's know what's see hilarious. What we can I remember when we had our very first call and that for anyone you watching my friends and we were like, Joseph was like, yeah, throw some curveballs at me. And I was like, I like your style, man. Um, yeah, but to be fair, I want, I want I the mean, negativity. Give me, give but me. But that being said, I was like, this is a good time because we have about literally about five or six minutes left. Any final questions, including the curveballs, I might add, um, yeah. cause Joseph's ready for ready. Joseph's ready for them. He's waiting for I'm them ready. I'm out. Um, <laughs> please let us know in the chat and I'll get them over for the yeah. final. What have you hated about so. this stream? Give us, give us, no, keep down. it positive. Keep it, keep it good. Yeah, keep no. it good energy. I'm sure. Positive <laughs> energy. Uh, yeah. No. Any curveballs? Do show, throw them that this way. Um, I've managed to go a whole stream about swearing as well, which I think is an absolute triumph for me. We've got five minutes, so be careful. Just keep, yeah. still keep it, keep it PG. There we go. But, uh, I'm doing it's been right. good to see your design process, and I, I always say when we do these streams as well. Um, and if you are, especially if you just watched for the very first time, it's nice to sort of see a creative come in and show you their own design methodology. Um, because you know we haven't seen it before, so it's always nice to to see what you've been doing, what you've been up to. Yeah, I think, and it's lovely to do it. it honestly, it's such a genuine joy to do this. It's. It feels like it doesn't feel like work. It's like go and have fun and stream to a load of people, see what they say, and just create something in about an hour and a half. That's yeah. just fun. That's just like that, that. That doesn't feel like work to me. So I'm eternally grateful to the world of Adobe and you guys inviting me on. I do appreciate well, it. Just actually, I mean, that is very, very nicely to mention. If you are watching and you'd be curious to know, um, well, curious to want to be part of the Adobe Live and get involved as well, um, you can definitely do that by submitting uh, potentially your name or even a friend who you think would be great for it on the recommendation tab on the Behance. Um, and then hopefully you could be on the next stream. So, yeah. Yellow. What do we think about yellow? Well, I'm... Interesting you mentioned the colour yellow because we've just had a question for you, um, Joseph, which is kind of related to yellow. Don't really know if it's related to design, but I really like it. Pizza, pineapple, pineapple on pizza, yes or no? <laughs> oh, absolutely, <laughs> yes. Live your life. Oh, really? Oh, I, wow. Uh, yeah, absolutely live your life. Oh, um, I'm, not of, I'm not of the hype of that means you're a bad person. Um, <laughs> That's a bit extreme. I, I, I think if you if you think that um, pineapple on pizza, person. for some reason, it, it makes you immoral, I, dis I disagree. I think it makes you um, flamboyant and fun. Um, I'm, I'm, of, I'm of it. I like it. I, I will yeah. do it. 
Yeah, I think we should. Why are we stopping at pineapple? Let's whack mango on a pizza. Come on, let's be on. That could be a thing. That could. Yeah. Okay. Similar flavor profile, slightly slimier. There we go. Mm -hmm. I love our. I love this stream. We've gone from comedy to design to pineapple and pizza. That's yeah. It's always fun on these streams. (laughs) That's what we love. We're doing what we do. It's been it's been great, and I think we've come to a resolution there where I would. I think this is my. This is my. This is where I. Oh, you added a full stop as well. I didn't even. I get kind of yeah. Past okay, just. uh, I don't know if I keep the full stop, but that sort of feels like a typeface now you've gone for the full start and rather than the exclamation mark as well which yeah I, more, exclamation mark is that a bit, bit too much is that too shouty is oh you know when people overuse and open an exclamation mark you're like oh, what's got you so excited or if I flip it upside know. down so it looks like an eye and then like that is an exclamation mark. I, I, so excited? I, and australians always use question marks it's um because they always do that at the end of sentences anyway that's um essentially a bad place to end it on so you know uh, i love australia Nice. So yeah, we, so do like a, uh, we do like a, maybe like a final recap, just in terms yeah. of what we've done from the very beginning of our stream, and then we'll maybe so do like a what we like did about you. was I very clumsily did this with strokes. We then tidied it up a bit, created them into letters. We then started to have fun with the letters to see what we could make. Um, we then went on a little bit of a riff about making your own S. We then started to apply it using spacing and sort of see what we can do with different executions, how we could tweak it, play with it. Um, Here we started, I think, being really cool and fun. Um, And then we just closed it off a little bit and created this, something that's a bit more shipping containery at the end, which I (laughs) think is um, a good day's work. No, it's been good. I can see, uh, I can see definitely through the chat. It has been popping off. We've got Carrie just said, I like the kind of period at the end as well, the full stop, just to kind of bit of all closure. To, oh. to, as it were um so we have about literally maybe like about three minutes left i want to make sure we can get away to know how our folks can find out more about you would you like oh. to plug uh, yeah i'd love to plug social? one thing i'm gonna yes, s- please do. just make sure that i've got the right things on my screen before i do plug um yeah if you do like um anything i've done design wise um i don't tend to talk about it much online so there's a website called info at joe that's uh, called joeparsons.co um, which mm-hmm. has all of that info. So if you want, um, if you like freelance work and you like screeny stuff, um, if you were more interested in my comedy, which is lovely if you are, um, this is my new website, uh, which I uh, launched literally two days ago. Um, it's um, shiny and new. And I'm loving it. Um, nice so background, you... by the way. Nice, uh, nice layout. Thank you so much. This is yeah. what this is my. Um, this is very much where I sort of. It's quite nice to have your own project. Um, I love the little scroll overs. It says, "Watch yeah. now." Oh, is this a, is this a, is this a Squarespace? Uh, no, or... it, it's. Um, I Ooh. used a, a software that is uh, called Framer, which basically um, bypasses uh, coders. Sorry, developers. Um, but yeah, it basically allows <laughs> UI designers to make our own thing. Um, it's not the most cost-effective in terms of like when you set it live. That they that's mm. when they get you. Uh, but if you want to see my special, I've got a special out um nice and uh Some serious yeah. press shots there as well joseph i saw i saw that quick uh browser looking sharp buddy <laughs> looking very well, good these these press shots here stop <laughs> there it, we go uh, slightly less shiny head in those um but yeah, yeah if you are interested in that do find me and do follow me online on insta uh, on instagram um joseph parsons comedy because um the follows go a long way and it's really helpful nice. um so cool. if you like any of that stuff um yes a lot of that's not PG. So um, if you're a child, don't go on, I reckon. So There we go. Well, I can see, I mean, we've just put, the moderators have just put in the chat uh, how folks can follow up about you on, so, on your website and social media. So I'm sure you're going to have a wave of folks uh, coming your way. So, uh, so Jason, it's thank you so much. Idea. Yeah, I hope you've enjoyed it. Have you enjoyed it? It's been great fun. Thank you so much for having me again. It's, it's such a joy. And um, hopefully it was useful and hopefully it was fun. It was, it was indeed. Uh, you kept me on my toes, and I like that. <laughs> so yeah, um, that's a no, no. <laughs> so it's a good sign to kind of mention a uh, nice little wrap up. So a massive thank you uh, to everyone who has come through the stream, who's watched along, who put some questions in there, um, and just a little reminder. Up next, we're going to be delving into the world of design uh, with Spotlight Aaron Draplin, who's an iconic graphic designer, entrepreneur, author, and overall legend from Portland, Oregon. Uh, so definitely want to stay tuned for that. And there you'll be learning more about his design work, what inspires him, 
and how details matter in your design. So stay tuned for that because it will definitely be a good one. Joseph, my man, it's been a pleasure to host oh, you, dude. Thank you so much. It's been such yeah. a joy. Thank you. Absolute pleasure. And I'm definitely going to tune in for when you do your stand-up as well. But I know that guy. I host You've got to come to a go. show now. I've got plenty I'd coming up. To. Yeah, nice, nice. We'll make it happen. We'll make it happen. And I can see everyone as well putting that thank yous and lovely emojis. So, uh, so yeah, everyone's been loving it. So on that note, I uh, hope you enjoyed the stream. Stay safe, my friends, and we'll see you all very, very soon. Ciao, ciao. Thank you very much. Bye.